Hey, so this is a quick video I want to shoot just to show what I've done with my mini mill and how I've modified it to better suit my needs. Uh, I've added a DRO and I've also stiffened up the column and this has helped a lot uh, in getting more accuracy and speeding up work. So there's a lot of videos out there on the web um, and you know a lot of good information. I'm uh, I got a lot of insights from other people and kind of incorporated it into what I've done here and then I've also riffed a little on what other people have done and done some things that I haven't seen other people do uh, so I'm gonna go over that now so first off um, for the z-axis I, uh, I found a guy on uh, Thingiverse uh, who 3d printed these mounts and uh, and this mount right here and that um, that works well for the Z uh, it gets you away from this uh, clamp that's used for the uh, the tension spring if you're using a gas strut you probably won't run into that um, but uh, so yes yeah, so I'll drop a link to his stuff on Thingiverse uh, he doesn't call out exactly what hardware he uses um, I used 632 screws um, that I got from Lowe's what are these? 632 by 1 inch um, screws some of them I had to shorten a little bit I just clipped them with dykes and filed them down um, but that worked pretty well that so there's two 632s that are holding each clamp are tapped into the um, the column you have to tap into the column and then there's another 632 here and that is not going into a column it's going into a nut I file down the edges of a nut and you fit a nut uh, 632 nut back there and uh, that's how I did that. I'm not sure if that's how the original designer intended it, but that's what I did, and it, it worked really well for me. So, so that's the Z-axis. Um, to mount the DROs, eye gauging gives you these uh, these posts. They also give you these these. Uh, these posts for the uh, to to you know brace them. Uh, I ain't, I ain't need them. Uh, I didn't think they were uh, adding value. I just used a larger six uh, six millimeter screw. Uh, I think it's six millimeter diameter by forty millimeters, and I replaced the six mil that was there with it. And this it's sturdy enough. It's okay. Um, this might not be an option if you've done the belt upgrade, which I plan to do eventually, but for right now, it works. Uh, for the Y, I saw another gentleman, I forget his name, he was up in Alaska. He did this, where he just used some, some angle, uh, drilled and tapped holes in it, and made braces for the Y axis. And uh, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is. This is working pretty good. Um, runs true and uh, it was is pretty simple. So that uh, the part where I I kind of did something unique uh, was in the in the X axis. So um, I saw another gentleman with a grizzly on YouTube. He used this angle. A couple people have done this. Used this sixteenth inch by one and a half inch. Uh, angle to cover the DROs um, but uh, what I did that was unique was I 3d printed I designed and 3d printed my own uh, bracket here uh, I figured if I was going to use 3d printed brackets for the Z why not use them for the X and worked pretty good I'm, I'm really happy with it so they uh, 
Unfortunately, now that it's installed, you can't really see it. So I'm going to have to show this in uh, SolidWorks in the model, what how the bracket behind the table looks. But um, it goes into the holes that are already existing there for the bellows cover. And it uh, holds the, I guess we'd call this the transmitter in place. And the table moves the, uh, the scale through the transmitter. Um, I, in order to keep the transmitter away from some of the, I think they're called gussets, um, and give you more travel in the Y, I, I moved the transmitter off center uh, of, of the, uh, the column. So the, the transmitter is on the, uh, the left side, uh, and that gives you more travel. And then because it's off center, um, you have to come out a little further on the left, which I have plenty of room here. So, um, what I did was I took off this Harbor Freight, you know, cheap plastic, uh, end cap and I 3d printed my own, uh, design and 3d printed my own. And then here I used a, um, brass threaded insert. I and it's uh, got a uh, M3 screw connecting uh, into the insert holding the scale up on this side. So just to show you in SolidWorks real quick the two pieces that I'm talking about to give you a better view. Uh, you have the side piece that I was just referring to and here is the rear bracket that holds on to the transmitter. Um, to give you a better view of that rear bracket that's the hard one to see here it is uh, got some countersunk holes for attaching to the transmitter and then it's got uh, these two larger holes connect uh, to the uh, to the saddle with uh, the M6 screws, uh, you're going to have to purchase slightly larger uh, M6 screws, uh, something on the order of a half an inch long. And then these two holes, the original idea was to put uh, threaded brass inserts, which I did, um, in there. And then you could put a screw in those to use as kind of a stop, a bumper, so that the transmitter wouldn't hit the gussets. Um, the gussets that I've been talking about out um, are let's see if we can see them I have the transparency changed but you'll notice in here um, is that that gusset uh, it, it's coming in to where the transmitter space is so you you have to offset the transmitter in order not to hit it and maximize your depth so and then the uh, side uh, bracket, that's uh, pretty self-evident. And so now we'll go back to talking about how I just use the high gauging brackets and how I mount them further onto the table. Before we go back, if you're looking to do this, I just want to let you know that you can find these uh, brackets on Thingiverse or on GrabCat in the links that I will post below. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. So that's an M3 screw holding. It's got a uh, two washers, three washers, two on this side, and then one giving it a little standoff behind the, um, the brackets that come with the eye gauging. And then it goes through the the aluminum angle and into the 3D printed part into the brass insert. And on the other side, I tapped one hole, forgive the camera angle, you can't really see it, but I tapped a, uh, a cap screw into the bed through the aluminum. And that's, a, I wanna say an 832 screw that I tapped in there. And so that's pretty much what I did. 
that was novel in terms of mounting the eye gauging DROs. Uh, one other thing I'll, I'll just show quickly is that I added a column stiffener here and this has been really helpful in reducing some of the play that you get when you push um, before I was getting like tremendous amounts of movement and it's just made it far more rigid I know some guys I've seen do welded setups and that's all well and good I just I saw another person do this I'll, I'll drop a link to their write-up on it I think it was like model model engine builders forum or something like that anyway I saw someone else do it and he said he had good results with it so I said what the heck let me try it it seems pretty simple it's only what six six bolt holes here and then you have these here and this gives you the ability to to cant it back or forward if you have if you have to play with that so you don't have to shim uh, I have another mini mill that's got the solid column but this is a tilting and I, I don't use the tilting I think that's a worthless feature so um, so yeah stiffening it up was the way to go for me and it's been really helpful and I'll drop a link to that so all right this is what I've done um, a lot of others have done the same in in one form or another I uh, hope you find it useful feel free to uh, ask questions and please give me some likes and thumbs thanks